Oh, well, we've moved on to uh, bringing in the last six, seven inches of the straight edge. So I want to explain the print. So this is the end we've scraped to about here, the red lines there. And what we've done with the print is we've only overlapped it from here to the end of it. So clearly we know that from the red line that way, it's all flat. And yet when we've printed it, we've only got what? About a six inch strip there and then seven inches there. So what the hell does that mean? It just means that this is high and this section will gradually extend along and this section will gradually extend along as we lower this. What we don't take is anything off from the red line that way. So we're just going to work that back to here. And then I'll bring you back and show you a second print. It's got a lot of ink on it because I've just re-inked the stone. But uh, it's important that you don't then start hacking away at that section because then you'll end up with, <laughs> with some kind of undulating surface. Anyway, maybe it's common sense. Who knows? This is about uh, eight cycles of taking off the end. So that's dropped down. We're getting a bit of an imprint. There's the red mark for two to three inches there. And this is extending along. We only had about three inches, we're now to about nine. Um, I just want to, sh I want to show you a couple of um, issues when you're printing like this and also when you're doing the step printing. Um, so bear with us and I'll bring you back in a sec. So I'm going to do the show you the two the, the printing um so the end in my left hand nearest to you is the area we're taking down and i can hear i can hear something underneath it now the way i've been printing it is no more than an inch rub and the reason for that is i don't want any any errors Now that will reproduce the print that I've just showed you. If however I run it all the way over so that I'm getting the full 36 inches printed and yet I've only got 28 inches of space we should get a misleading print. So that's the the end we've already scraped all of this that's the section that we know we're getting a proper print on but look how it's extended it and this is the area just in front of the red line there's the red line so for all intents and purposes if i printed it like that i'd think oh nearly there but what it's actually doing is and i know that the plate is flat but by running it over that, the straight edge is going over it. And for all intents and purposes, smearing ink all the way across the surface that isn't in contact. So you've got to be a little bit mindful of your prints. Um, and I'm no expert, I'm just uh, learning as I go. But I know, I do know that this section of the, um, from the first time we're printing all to the right, this section will be riding up a touch on unscraped bit versus fairly well scraped. So you, you're always gonna get some degree of error here, which if you look, is why we've got the, the density of the blue in that area, when we actually print it properly. So you've got six or seven inches of the original unscraped surface. Then you've got this two to three inch, let's call it questionable area. If you take it all off, you might end up with then actually a dip here as this one comes in and so does the rest. So what I suggest and what I've been doing is taking that off, wait until it's the printing drops right away and you get a heavier print here and then lower this down a little bit more. Bring this in again. There's probably a better way of doing it, but it uh, works for me. 
So this is uh, five passes after the uh, demonstration of how not to print. So it soon comes in. So that's the uh, the end we're working on. You can see we've got a very light patch here. And this bit I've not touched, so it's extended all the way along. Um, so now I'm going to take all the blues off there. And then I'm going to flip it and print each end and just see how it, how it compares. But uh, right at the minute, it's tea break time. So that's the last roofing pass. Uh, the red lines are me highlighting the, uh, the, the larger bare areas. So if it ain't red, it's all right. So we've got a bit of a bare patch there, which is uh, mainly down to the corrosion. And to get that out, I've got to drop everything else down. And the, obviously this area, I haven't, I haven't printed it. You can see it fading out. But uh, from a point of view of it being uh, flat one end to the other, I'm okay with that now. So yeah, tea break time. All right, so we've uh, just done a double print, which is basically printed this end, which was the short end. And then we've flipped the unit round and done exactly the same print from the other end. So for all intents and purposes, the middle's flat. We wanted to see that the ends weren't either higher or lower and they're not, they're good. So this is the end that uh, we've done the least on, which is where we started. So we're a little bit light in that area. But if you look at the size of the curling, the scrapes they're uh, they're a bigger radius on this end moving down to the middle and you can see the curling's getting smaller so there's more points per inch so the plan now is carry on doing that sort of double print and get the curls as small as i can and lift the points per inch Aiming for something like 25 points per inch and ideally 60 to 70 percent contact. Quality controls taking up residence. Well, this is the first sampling. So we've got 31, 31, 21, 11, 24. 21 and 15 a uh, little bit misleading because um, well main, mainly because of the size so the, the density of the coverage is about the same all the way along um, I just need to break it up a bit more um, seems to be plagued with this kind of ribbon effect which has to be something to do with the way I um, curl across Usually, what I usually do is uh, break that up on the smaller circles, but smaller curls, but it doesn't seem to have had the same effect on this. You can see definite stripes going across. Anyways, on the school run now, so uh, we'll come back to this uh, over over the next couple of days. We'll have another bash at this. Uh, 36 inch straight edge I've actually got stepped it back a couple of stages I've gone back to re-roughing it um, I've got it down to about just short 30 points per inch but getting a lot of striping in it um, I've highlighted the striping with the red lines uh, I can only assume it was something to do with the uh, curling that I was doing I've yet to repeat it so I'm trying to work out how I've managed to achieve it so what I'm doing now is going back over it and just trying to get rid of the very, very fine, um, it's almost like a chatter. So then we'll find you a bit, just about see it there, working its way across. And it's emphasized on the uh, badly corroded sections. So I've, uh, as I said, got it between 25 and 30 points and then 
because there was a, still a couple of smaller hollows where the um, corrosion was. I went over it with two reasonably heavy but uh, heavy roofing curls, uh, sort of an inch size. Flipped it and did two the other way, and then flipped it and did one. Printed it and it all but got rid of the uh, the chatter lines. So now I'm just going back over it now and uh, trying to get rid of all the rest. Uh, and then I've got to obviously bring that end in again. A bit frustrating. More so because I can't actually work out how I've done it. I've been uh, scratching away at the three footer. And I've just took a, another print. Well, you can just about make out the blues on that and a few darker higher spots. I'm getting to them. I mean, you could you could shows up very well there. They're the uh, highest points. So I'm going to um, give it another curl over, taking off the blues. Uh, I'm going to tweak tweak the uh, scraper a bit so I can make a tighter curl and then I think we'll be pretty much call it done on that which has been a bit epic it's uh, a real pain in the rear when you're uh, scraping something longer than this plate you're printing it off um, just trying to get it so that you've got an even print end to end we know heavy spot on the overlap yeah Oh, to have a six foot straight edge already ready. Well, we'll give it another three uh, cycles. And I've just sampled it and we're down to 30, 35, 31. That's the lowest sample, 29, 30, 30. 33, 37. Um, distribution's not bad. There's a good 50% coverage on about 70, well, no, about 85% of the whole surface. That one spot's got some larger holes. I've put an extremely light coat of ink to get the print. So I can pick out the uh, actual points of contact. So I am going to call that done. Hurrah! I was just uh, sat and watched Rob Renzetti doing his. Uh, um, update on the Moore style of scraping, which was, uh, as all Robin's uh, videos are, um, very informative. And it struck me that uh, I'm not taking enough care sharpening my scrapers. Um, or I'm certainly not ringing the changes. And one of the things I'm battling with with this one is it's so bloody heavy, there's no flex at all. And I can't actually polish this back face. So you can just see a very, very light polish, which I'm achieving by that. Um, anyway, so as I purchased a strip of uh, carbide, I have no idea what grade it is. It's off eBay. Uh, I think from memory it was about 13 quid and it was eight inches long or 200 mil long, 180 mil long, sorry, six inches. Um, 20 mil wide and a 3 mil thick. Um, I used an angle grinder with a thin cut off disc and whilst it wasn't brilliant and got through a disc pretty quick it did cut it. So the idea was to make myself up some little blanks. I've then took the, well you can see on the, on the original, it's got like a scale over it and that takes quite a bit of uh, polishing off. So I've been doing it on a, a diamond lap 
This one was our coarse one from a firm called Easy Lap, which I think they're American. Um, so having took the worst of it off, let me see that. Just a little bit on that corner and that corner, but they're the ones that are going to be brazed. And that'll be the cutting edge when it's shaped. So the now, now the job is to uh, get it to focus, seal the little tiny scratches, start getting them reduced down. So I'm hand lapping on a, this is a fine stone, I haven't got a medium. And this one was made by DMT, which I think is another American stone. What I've been surprised about is it's relatively easy to uh, lap. And I'm not looking for anything fancy, just a nice smooth polished surface. As flat as possible. But it's not like trying to lap in a uh, edge of a gauge plate or anything like that. But anybody who's uh, tried to polish up the back of wood turning chi uh, wood uh, chisels <laughs> knows how tedious it is. Now this is coming in pretty quick and I'm guessing it's partly because of uh, the relatively small size. So you can see that the scratch, scratches have reduced in size. I just want to clean them up along this bottom edge. And then the same on that side. And then we're going to try and have a go at brazing it. Now my problem is I've only got a propane torch. Got quite a big head for it, so I don't know what I've got in the way of um, brazing. Well, I've certainly got no brazing flux that I'm aware of, or soldering flux. Um, so I might have to uh, do that on another day, but I'm going to get it all prepped up today. Bring you back when we're uh, bright and shiny. So that's off a uh, say the fine. The DMT fine which I think is something like a 1200 grit so there's still scratches there but that's on a par with well, you can see that it's not much between the two that's the Samvik so what I'm just going to do is lift up that Put, a, put it over a finer stone. Now the only thing I've got finer than the um, DMT stone is one that is actually a, it's an artificial stone, it's called water stone, Japanese water stone. I've no idea whether this will um, work on carbide. First of all we have to get a bit of a slurry going. Now I'm using just a, a very small diamond stone for that. And it'll either work or it won't. So this stone is a equivalent of a six thousand grit. And this is what I use to polish the uh, or hone the edges of the uh, edge tools for the woodworking I used to do. Problem is, every bit of grease shows up as a, a dull face. Still got a bit to go, but uh, you can see it's it's reducing the size of the scratches further. So I'll just keep working that backwards and forwards, and then uh, see where we get to. So, I don't know whether you can camera will pick that up. Top one there has been, um, that's 1200 grit. And then the bottom one, which is looks duller, is a 6000 grit. I mean, this you can still see scratches on it. 
I'm not convinced it's going to make a great deal of difference on this. And for the work involved, I'm uh, almost inclined to leave it until I've got them brazed on. Cleaning them up with a 1200. And then uh, I can look at just polishing the very edge with the 6. I've got a 10,000 grit stone as well, which is... Uh, you get a very, very high quality finish, but uh, it's a lot of rubbing. Anyway, get me braze, get me handles sorted out, and then uh, look for some brazing. Well, that's me done. I've got it up above 30 points. It's taken a lot of messing about with uh, just trying to get a smaller curl with a scraper that I can use. And then trying to get the ink spread it's usable. What I've ended up doing is um, taking a print off the plate and then cleaning the plate and then rubbing the printed surface back on the plate and then knocking off those uh, little black shiny spots and that's took it down uh, a bit of a faff but I'm happy that it'll uh, do the job now it's not the prettiest of scrapes that's me smudging the uh, bit of crap earlier anyway um, not much else to say. I did make up a scraper. Um, I brazed on the tips I polished up, but it's uh, it'll be fine for detail work. But it wants, I think, slightly. I want something between these two. That's too just a bit too thick and heavy for doing the the phase after roughing. Um, that one feels all right, but it's uh, high carbon steel, and with the end being quite so wide. Trying to pick out a single point is uh, well, nigh on impossible in my skill level. So I'm going to have a think about what kind of uh, shaft to make for a scraper. And then uh, prepare a few more blanks of uh, carbide. Right, I'm going to clean that off, uh, oil it up and uh, stick it in its case. Jobs are good.
So what have we learnt from the exercise? Uh, we've confirmed what we already knew, which was uh, trying to scrape in a three foot straight edge on a 24 inch long plate. Uh, it just complicates the problem. Uh, trying to scrape in a corroded and rusted surface, which is pretty badly pitted. I'm suspecting given how hard the cast iron was that I'm, I'm actually wondering if the rust eating treatment um, affected the cast iron in some way to make actually making the cast iron itself harder don't know uh, it seemed very bloody resistant to wanting to be scraped smoothly um, so the next one I'll do I might um, scrape off the cast iron rather than trying to get it munched off um, you can see from some of the pictures that I'll include on the end of this that the the rust pitting uh, is still not fully removed and you can see the little tiny pitting marks and you can see a couple of the areas where there's a, about eighth of an inch circles where the, the rust had just chewed away. Um, if I had the machining capacity it would have been nice to take a, a ten thou skim off uh, taking it back to good metal all the way over. I haven't, I couldn't. I didn't. Um, I think that would have speeded up the whole process. Um, in terms of which is the easier to do, this sort of half moon scrape versus the more convention, current convention, which is uh, a straight scrape. Um, I think the half moon is definitely slower in my hands. Um, now I'm not saying it can't be quick but for the sake of the amount of hours I've put into developing my skill set for that is I would say of a magnitude of three or four times more than what it took me to learn how to do the straightforward scrape. So if you're starting out on it and you want to scrape a surface stick with the straight scrapes uh, it will produce you a scraped finish far quicker than starting from scratch to learn the half moon shape. Is it better? Don't know. Um, I've, I've not got the expertise to make that judgment. It's certainly quicker doing the standard straight scrapes um, and the half moon has its aesthetic appeal. Um, I've still got some uh, skill to gain to actually get that aesthetics looking right. Where I've struggled is trying to get the curls small enough and tight enough to get sort of above 24, 25 points per inch. Getting 24, 25 is pretty straightforward as it is with the straight scrape. Um, I mean, I found it very, bringing an edge in on 24 points, just doing the, the straightforward scraping. It very rhythmic, very repeatable, um, and you get a very consistent looking surface. I don't do in this half mooning. Um, now I've, I've noticed that mine is still significantly different to the way that Chris does it. And I've yet to see Chris complete a surface, so it's difficult to see where, you know, where he goes from where he's at. Um, on the subject of Chris, his wife's had, uh, had an accident and he's basically been tied up looking after her. Um, so we're wishing him all the best and all the best for his wife. Hope to get him back in here in the coming weeks. In the meantime, I'm going to finish off my blower project um, and get on with making up the forge. Um, and then I have to take a view on what I'm going to do next for the lathe. Um, I've either got to use this three foot straight edge now and try to bring in a four or a five foot and I think a five foot straight edge will do me for the uh, the lathe. Six foot is more than adequate, it covers the whole length of the bed, but given that the head takes up two foot of that, I only need four foot of actual uh, straight edge over the bed. Um, and I know the two straight edges that we were gonna do first. So that's enough of me blathering on. I uh, hope you've found the exercise of interest and uh, do us a favor, share the videos, recommend them, uh, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I'm trying to get my subscriber level up to a couple of thousand. Um, I've got 750 odd to go. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully the things to come down the line, as I say, I've still got to rebuild this lathe. Uh, I've got to scrape in the bed and all the other bearing surfaces. Uh, it's just, it's a mammoth project. Uh, there's going to be plenty of footage of it, but I can't do any of it whilst it's covered in straight edges. Um, that's part of the reason for the slow uploading of videos. I want to try and get stuff done so you can see a finished product rather than a, here's me scraping again, and we're just scraping this one again. And we're just bringing this in again. You get the idea. Tatty noise. Have a good one.